Good morning and welcome to week six of our When God Shows Up series. Today, we will be talking about the difference between success versus failure. We live in a world where people are trained from kindergarten to be successful and to aim for success. Just think about it. When you were at kindergarten, the biggest decision you had to make was how to go down the slide or should I go across the jungle gym? And as we get older, we look for opportunities to make those same types of difficult decisions in order to accomplish success. By doing a simple Google search of the definition of success, we discover that success is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. And yet, so many graduate from college, get careers, and are still wondering, why don't I feel successful? Maybe that's you this morning. Might I propose one feels a lack of success because they are looking at success from the wrong perspective. I believe we will never fully experience success until we define what success looks like from God's perspective, the great designer himself. He is the one who created us and would best know what purpose for which we were created. After all, if God created an apple corer to core an apple, how successful can it be in peeling a potato? I'm just saying. When God shows up, success has more to do with staying or abiding in a vital and real connection with Him rather than ministry performance, moral perfection, religious observations, Bible knowledge, or even degrees or pedigrees. Can I get an amen? How many of us know you can say the right thing but still be totally wrong because of the way you said it? Just ask my husband, Glenn. He can testify to this truth. The number one challenge for us has always been my tone. What can I say? I'm a work in progress, hallelujah. How about this one? You can know a lot of Bible, but still live a fruitless Christian judgmental life. On the flip side, a Christian can appear to fail, but in reality be a huge success in the eyes of the Father. You say, Pastor Teresa, how is that possible? Well, look at the death of Jesus on the cross. The Pharisees and even the disciples at one point thought Jesus had failed. Little did they know, his obedience is what led to the greatest victory and success story of all times. So how does God define a successful life versus one that is a failure? Well, Romans 8 instructs us on how to live successfully rather than failing. The Apostle Paul describes this life of success as a life ruled by the spirit and the life of failure as a life ruled by the flesh. Simply put, success equals spirit, failure equals flesh. Everyone has a problem, a challenge, a battle to overcome, and that battle is our sin nature. Romans 7, 18 through 24 describes this battle like this. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Anybody ever feel like that? I know I did and sometimes I still do. Almost feels at times like there's two people living inside of me. Just keeping it real, people. The good news is we all have the same answer to our same problem. And that's found in Romans 7, 25. And it says, thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. When we came to Christ and put our faith in him, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit as a first deposit of our inheritance. Ephesians 1, 4 tells us the spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. Why would God do that, you may be asking? Well, he did that, according to the word of God, he did this so we would praise and glorify him. God knew we could never do what is right in his eye through our own power. 
So he sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners, we humans have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law or the penalty for sin would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit's leading. So the key to our success in this life is don't follow your flesh. Instead, follow the Spirit. The choice is yours. Scripture tells us, therefore, dear, dear brothers and sisters, you no longer have an obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die or fail. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Be successful. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We certainly will face a physical death at some point or another. Death is inevitable. And the decision you make to follow the Spirit's leading will determine what happens after death. But this morning, consider that you could be dead or dying right now. That's right, I said it, a dead man walking of sorts. Physically you are alive, but inside you're dying of complacency, apathy, and settling for a quote unquote good life instead of living God's best life for you now. To someone who is very much physically alive, but spiritually and emotionally dead, that person who seems to have everything they need and yet feels so empty and unfulfilled and unsatisfied, why? because they have yet to discover that which they were created for, their purpose. On the other hand, I know success to be that person who seems to not have all the things this world could offer and yet is so full of life, joy, peace, and passion because daily they live out their God-ordained purpose. To me, in the eyes of the Father, that is success. To be clear, this kind of success will be praise and glory to God and will always include serving, equipping, discipling, and adding value to people. I'll give you an example of my daughter Giselle. She worked her entire life with one purpose, to get into an Ivy League school. And we're so proud of her, we're so incredibly proud of her, of all that she accomplished from kindergarten all the way through high school, graduating with honors. And she did it, she made it, she was successful. She got a full ride scholarship to Princeton University and off and away she went to Princeton for her first year of college. And honestly, that first year, she was a great success. She got great grades, the teachers enjoyed her, she did well with all her classes, but something on the inside of her was stirring. Something was not being satisfied about her divine purpose, the call on her life. And she came to a crossroads in her life where she needed to decide, do I stay and continue pursuing this thing that I think is success? Or do I really take heed and listen to the Spirit's leading on the inside? In short, she decided to follow the Lord's leading. She dropped out of Princeton University, which seemingly in this world is crazy. Nobody walks away from a $60,000 a year grant and nobody walks away from Princeton. But my daughter realized that on the path she was on, it would never take her to where she feels called to be. And so she's returned home and she's flourishing in our family ministry and discovering how God has fearfully and wonderfully created her. She has a passion to write and to bring forth spiritual truths for people. And she's discovering the purpose and the plan God has always intended for her. And so I would say, where the world says she failed, absolutely not. She is totally in the eyes of the Father, succeeding and living her best life now. You say, okay, Pastor Teresa, that seems easy enough. But why am I still struggling? What do I need to do from right now, right here? Where do I go from here? In one word, the answer is surrender. You will surrender every day. The question is to what will you surrender? Will you surrender to your flesh? Or will you surrender to the spirit? Will you surrender to good ideas in your life? Or will you surrender to the God ideas in your life? In every moment, with every decision, you surrender to something. Instead of just following your human nature, pause and pivot. That's right, turn to somebody and tell them, pause and pivot. You want to binge watch your favorite show, but you know it would be more life-giving to read a book that will feed your soul and spirit? Pause, reflect, and what? ask the Lord, what would you have me do in this moment? Pivot in the direction of the Lord. This is the journey we make to go from self-speak to God-speak 
which Pastor Mike talked about in week one. You see, we say all kinds of things to ourselves, but is it God's truth? No, absolutely not. We will know God's truth by feeding on his word, which is truth. You see, whichever we feed the most, that's what's gonna win. That's what will get stronger. You feed your flesh, it gets stronger. You feed on the spirit, it gets stronger. It all begins with our first step of surrendering and making Jesus our Lord and our Savior. So if you want to live that life of success in the spirit, would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, Father, thank you for the forgiveness of my sins through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. I choose to believe he is my Lord and Savior and that his spirit will now live in me. As I follow him, I know I will live a life of success in you and for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, if you said that prayer, I would like to welcome you into the family of God. Be sure to fill out the connection card so we can rejoice with you. And we're so excited to watch as God continues to show up in your life. For us all, I pray that we would take the time to pause, to pivot, and to pursue the Spirit's leading in the coming weeks so that we will live the life of success the Father intended for each of us, His precious children. I love you. I pray blessings over you. God bless and have a great week.